Hey y'all, welcome back to Rated RPG, your number one channel for gaming news and commentary. I'm taking a break from watching the Dollars trilogy right now. I think I'm right in the middle of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, which is turns out is an insanely long movie, clocking in over three hours, uh, to bring you this message. This message being, I really love it, don't you? When people tell you what is and isn't relevant, when people tell you what you want, we so often get our fake journalists, we get, I'm not saying fake news, I'm saying fake journalists, pe activists purporting to be journalists, we get developers, we get uh, some of the more obnoxious members of the echo chambers that we call Twitter, Reddit, and other uh, of the forums who are always enjoy telling people what they should think and what should be important to them rather than letting people just decide what's important to them and letting that be reflected in society or uh, the markets. So I love today reading up a little piece on games industry where the CEO of Take-Two Interactive, Strauss Zelnick, Strauss I apologize if I mispronounced that. I don't apologize for them making the joke. Uh, Mr. Zelnick basically went on to say, basically said in his interview with Gaming Games Industry, backwards compatibility is crap. Now he didn't use the word crap, but he said it is irrelevant. Backwards compatibility is not something that the industry should be focused on, and it's not something that will ultimately matter to anyone in the long run. To which I refute, no. You see, backwards compatibility is pretty much the only thing I think that this generation's Xbox has got going for it. And I give Microsoft their props for implementing backwards compatibility all the way back to their original Xbox. I don't often give Microsoft props, but I will give them that. The PS4 suffered in reputation and, I don't know, sales, it's hard to say, because of their lack of backwards compatibility with the PS3, the PS2, and the PS1. Uh, as far as I know, the PS1 and the PS2 wouldn't be that hard to be backwards compatible with. It's just an emulation chip. The PS3, I get it. There's a whole range of stuff going on with the PS3's engine, blah, 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 computer being more advanced, yada, yada, that I don't understand. And that may complicated matters when it came to backwards compatibility. But Strauss is like, nah, backwards compatibility, who needs that? It's not relevant. No one should be focusing on that. Backwards compatibility, to me, is something that really drives a lot of people because the only one of the only reasons... I'm going to be picking up a PS5 as soon as possible is because of the fact that it is going to have PS4 backwards compatibility. We still don't know as of yet how far back it's going to be compatible, but the fact that it is going to be PS4 backwards compatible, that is like, yes, please, gotta pick it up. Because when the PS4 first came out, I just said to myself, I'm going to wait Give it a couple years, let the price come down, because what's the point in buying a new console right now if there are no launch titles or not enough launch titles to justify owning it? But backwards compatibility changes that equation. It means that I can pick up the game, enjoy the latest game, but still enjoy my plethora of other games without fear of them be instantly becoming obsolete. I have to put these back without spilling them. So, backwards compatibility is a major issue, I think, to a lot of people. And Strauss Zelnick, or Zelnick Strauss, I, I don't remember, really needs to reevaluate, I think, his opinion on this matter. Similarly kind of feeding into this is the head of Platinum Games, a, uh, I'm not going to, I'm, I have his name written down here. It's a Japanese name, I assume. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. I apologize for that. Inaba 
something. I apologize. I'm not going to try to pronounce it. He's saying that, hey, PS5, Xbox Scarlet, they're not going to be a big deal. I mean, after all, it's just barely improvements. I mean, on the existing technology, why isn't anyone doing something big and new today? Woo. Uh, why aren't they going back to the old system when we had uh, 30 different competing consoles and people trying to come up with new stuff and new mechanics, new, I don't know, peripherals? To which my response, again, is because why do we need to? Gaming has reached a good state where I can hold my controller, I know how it feels, it feels good, I enjoy playing the games. So why do we need to keep pushing and pushing? Yes, a lot of the chips that are going to be in the Xbox Scarlet are going to be the same ones in the PlayStation 5. Yes, they don't really use a lot of proprietary stuff anymore, but that's because they've advanced to the point to where they have reached that sweet spot to where games are just enjoyable to play. I don't know if there necessarily needs to be a huge leap forward in technology. Uh, the head of Platinum, he's like, hey, I'm excited about Stadia. That's that's where the future is. At least they're trying something new. No, they're not trying something new. They're trying to just run a uh, bunch of games off of PC hardware and stream it through a cloud and say that's the big new thing and it's a huge breakthrough, although really it's just going to be a cluster fudge with latency issues. Uh, so no, it's still, there is no hardware advancement there. It's just more software advancement. So this isn't really something that's going to grab headlines. I just feel like when people get on the cases of saying the market's stagnant because things aren't changing the way they want them to, or why aren't things the way they used to be. Consoles may not be advancing anymore because they've reached that point where they are what they need to be. And we, as the consumer, don't tell us that we don't know what we want. We know what we want. That's why something like backwards compatibility is the biggest selling point and as big a focus as it is to the guys over at Sony and Microsoft because the, we know what we want. We enjoyed all these past generation games. We want to be able to continue playing them, but in one box, not having to have 10 boxes stacked up on our own makeshift wooden uh, game case. And the market reflects that people care about backwards compatibility. Look at all this. Retro. I don't want to have to pay all over again for digital copies of stuff I already own. There, Granted, there are things I will pay for. I will pay for remasters. If there's been a graphical enhancement, something that's worth the value, then I will pay. The, remember, there's a difference between price and value. Price is what you're paying. Value is what you are getting out of it. And there are many games out there I would say I've paid the price for but did not get value out of. Uh, but remasters, I would say that is worth the value, being able to play them on a next-gen console with enhancements. But don't knock backwards compatibility. Because I will pay a higher price for a PlayStation 5 for the value of being able to enjoy all of my old games in a convenient manner. And isn't that what we're really doing? Paying for convenience? I don't know. You tell me what you think. Uh, leave me a comment down below if you liked what you heard. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think. Have a good one, y'all. Thanks for tuning in to Rated RPG.